What's up, fellow gamers? Today, we're gonna learn the process to enhance graphics for Nintendo Game Boy games. After we're done, you'll know how to take graphics that look like this and make them look like this. And a couple of quick notes that I should point out. First, this does require the use of an emulator called GB Plus by this developer. Keep in mind that this author recently noted on GitHub that the custom graphics feature of this emulator will likely be removed from future rev levels. As a result, to follow this process, you will likely need to use version 1.5 or a forked version that continues development on custom graphics, if that ever occurs. Next, be warned that there is room for improvement with the overall development process and current list of features. While pack building, I have noticed that the emulator may occasionally crash without warning. In addition to that, keep in mind that older packs will likely not be compatible with the latest version of GBE+. As an example, the partially complete Super Mario Land pack by Gregory McGregorson works in Rev Level 1.0. However, it will not work in the latest Rev Level, and there is a very good reason for this. As the custom graphics process was being developed, the emulator author noticed that the emulator was mixing up door tiles in Metroid 2 with completely different tiles. So, an attempt was made to use 16-bit salt values in the process. It solved the problem, but it did break compatibility with older packs. This shouldn't be too much of an issue going forward because there aren't a lot of graphics packs out there at the moment, and there should be even fewer from Rev Level 1.0. In any case, special thanks to the GBE author for creating this emulator and also messaging me some of the history and tips that were extremely helpful in putting together this tutorial. With that out of the way, let's get to updating some Game Boy graphics. All right, so to get started, we're gonna to navigate to the main releases for GBE Plus and we're gonna to navigate to the version 1.5. You can grab that here. And once you've downloaded it, you can navigate to your downloads folder and right click and extract it with a program such as 7-Zip. We're gonna extract it here. And now that we've done that, we can get rid of this file. Open up the folder. And once you've done that, navigate to your data folder and create a folder in that called dump. This is where the graphics that we're gonna dump for the game and edit are actually going to be located. So we're gonna double click on that and create a new folder inside that for our objects and another one for background elements. We're gonna call that BG for background. And then you create one more file, a text file, and we're gonna call that manifest. This actually tells the emulator where to look for the custom graphics. So let's go back to the main folder and double click on the, the QT folder. And at this point, we go to Options, Display, go to Paths, and the background and object elements already have the correct location specified. So for the custom graphics, we're gonna go to Browse, the manifest file, go to Dump, and click on the manifest file there. At this point, it'll allow us to go to display and now we can hit this checkbox because we've enabled those different paths just a moment ago. For the scale, this is important because this is the scale that you're going to work with when you actually dump graphics. I prefer either 1x or 2x and that's a matter of, a matter of personal taste. And from there you can go to controls and then you can bind your keyboard or controller to the, the actual emulator. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, and from here we can hit close. Go back to file, open, and then you can open up your ROM. And before I start, I'm actually gonna disable the sound so you can hear me a little bit better. All right, so we've started the game here. Now at this point, we can actually dump the graphics. So to do that, you can go to Advanced, Custom Graphics, and this is the interface we're going to be working with. 
Now you'll notice in the upper left hand corner there's a graphics layer. You need to pay attention to that depending on if you want to dump background or object graphics. We're going to start with the background so we're going to leave this the way it is. And for this example we're going to use the pipe section here. So to dump this so we can edit it later, you just left click in the upper left hand corner of what you want to dump, left click, drag, and you'll notice it highlights the pipe. At this point we're going to name it over here and call it pipe and dump current selection. At this point we can navigate to the manifest tab and it looks like it dumped correctly. Now for the objects, one example of an object is Mario. So to see what's on the screen you can change the layer and go to objects. You can see Mario right here. Now you can dump from here but there's actually a faster way to do that and we're going to use the object meta tile tab to do that. And the reason is because you can't click and drag like you can with background uh, layers. So we're going to go to object meta tile and this changes the canvas. We're going to change this to 2x2 two two because Mario is 2x2 two two tiles. And we're also going to go to configure and we're going to check this box here so that we include transparency when we dump and that's more important for objects. Now go back to object meta tile tab and what you do is you scroll through the different tiles on the screen until it looks correct as far as what you want to dump. So this is actually Mario's upper left hand corner of his hat and the green section indicates transparency so that's correct. We're going to just left click here. We dumped that scroll through, click here, scroll again, scroll one more time. Okay so it looks like we've made up all of Mario here so at this point we can actually dump the entire section into our dump folder. So we're going to name this small Mario and dump. Now to see if this worked correctly you can go to the manifest tab and it looks like that went through as well. Okay, so now let's get down to actually editing the graphics. I'm gonna do this in Photoshop. You can try a different program like GIMP because that's free, but I'm gonna use Photoshop because I'm just more familiar with it. And once it opens, we're gonna open up both the graphics we wanna edit and the graphics that we wanna take from. But first, we're just gonna to go to open, data, dump, background, and double click here. Okay, This is the graphics we want to edit. And since we're going to work on a scale of 2x, this dumps at a scale of 1x, so we have to manually change it. And to do that, you can go to image, image size, change this to percent, change it to 200, and go to nearest neighbor and hit OK. I can hit control plus to just look at it more closely and I can hit save. Now we're going to do the same thing for Mario. Let's go to open, object, Mario, image, image size, change this to percent, 200, nearest neighbor, and OK. Now we hit, can hit control save. Now let's actually grab the graphics we want to use to replace these here. To do that, I'm actually going to grab it from a place called Sprite's, uh, Spriter's Resource. Okay, And I'm going to grab Mario and Luigi file here. And I'm just going to end up using the Mario section here. But to save it, just right click, save image as, and call it Mario. Let's go back, go back again. And I'm going to grab the pipe from here. Right click. And I'm going to call this my pipe file. Save. Now I can minimize this. Now let's open those up. Go to File Open. Open up the pipe. And open up Mario as well. Okay, so to isolate what we want to use, you can hit Control Plus to zoom in the space bar and then left click and drag. Control Plus again, 
and I'm going to use the select tool to just select Mario here. And then I'm going to hit the crop button, double click. And I'm also going to change this from index mode just so it's easier to work with. I'm going to hit the select tool and we're actually going to use the magic wand tool to get rid of this blue area. Now, in order to do that though, what I need to do is unlock this layer by double clicking here, hit OK, and you'll notice that lock goes away. This just makes it so we can make it transparent. So now that this is all selected, you can hit the delete key on your keyboard. And we're gonna right click, duplicate layer, and we're gonna move this to small Mario. Hit OK. Let's go back over here. Control plus, OK. And we're gonna use this move tool to move Mario down. Now it looks like Mario is a different size. That's kind of okay in this case because the difference between small and big Mario in the original game isn't really that exaggerated. So we're just gonna make it a little bit more exaggerated for this example. And at this point, we just need to get rid of the original graphics. So left click on the background layer. We're gonna use the pencil tool here. Hit Alt to grab our background color and left click to just expand it and color over it. Let's move to Mario again. Click on the select tool just to see if he's centered. It looks like he's 10 pixels that way and 10 pixels that way. So it looks good. So at this point we can hit shift, grab the bottom layer here, right click and merge layers. And now we can hit control save and Mario should be done there. So let's do the pipe now, same deal, control plus, Spacebar to move it. Control plus again. Left click and drag. Use the crop tool, double click. Right click here, duplicate layer, move it over to the pipe. Okay, it looks like that fits perfectly. If you click on this eyeball, you'll see it covers it just, just perfectly. So. At this point, we can just left click after holding down shift, hit merge layers, and control save. All right, now let's see if it actually worked. So let's just close out the emulator and start it again. File open. All right, the graphics are in the game. At this point, to complete an entire game, all you should need to do is repeat that general process for the graphics in the entire game. Once you've done that, you should come up with something that looks a little bit like this. This is a partially complete pack that was completed some time ago in version 1.0. While it was never finished, it should give you some idea of what can be possible with this process. Before I sign off, there's one other thing I'll note, and that's if you wanted to share the pack that you create with other users. To do that, it's fairly simple. All you have to do is navigate back to the data section. And what you can do is right click on this and create a zip file and send that off. What I might suggest is when you send it off, make sure to include some install instructions so users know where your background, object, and manifest files are and where to point to them using the emulator. As a reminder, you can do that fairly easily. Under General Settings, Pass, and just make sure to note where each of those is located. In addition to that, make sure to tell your users what scale you use, whether it's 2x, 1x, or some other setting, and make sure to tell them to load custom graphics as well, otherwise the pack won't work. Finally, also make sure to tell them what version of GBE Plus to use, because as you might remember, packs created in version 1.0 won't be compatible with later packs. And that's it. I hope you found this video useful and have fun creating those packs. And as always, happy gaming.